Beautiful or ugly? Hate it or love it? Ugly can be a matter of opinion. These trucks make you look twice and wonder, what were they thinking? Or you might just love it. This is Glenn, and today we're bringing you 12 trucks so ugly, they're beautiful. Number 12. When Ford debuted the Econo line, their new line of cab-over light-duty vans and pickups, they were an immediate success. Half van, half truck, these pickups were praised by most, but unfortunately, they never got the respect they deserved. Even though this truck was less expensive than most, the Econo line had a reasonably short run compared to others of its time, at only six years or so. Shorter, lighter, and easier to maneuver, this had a cargo box measuring over seven feet, and it was a perfect choice for running errands or use as a delivery truck. Number 11. We can't be too hard on Chevy for this one. Despite some rather unusual aesthetics, this vehicle served many purposes during its time. The 6400 was known to be used almost everywhere, from farm equipment, dump trucks, delivery vehicles, or to get around town. Underneath their interesting design, this truck had a stock inline six-cylinder engine and a four-speed manual transmission with a two-speed rear axle. Unfortunately, a lot of complaints from its critics came because of the grill. Number 10. The 1974-77 Mazda Rotary pickup wasn't really ugly, it just had a look that was a little, let us say, different. It was more of a diamond in the rough, if you ask us. If you happened to come across one of these and you took a look under the hood, you would see the first and only Wankel engine ever to be put into a pickup. It was very narrow, and the long body almost makes the large bed appear unproportional to the rest of the truck. On top of that, they added a soft cover which almost makes you think they tried to hide something. Towards the end of this truck's life, they decided to add four inches to the cab. This did not help to increase sales, however, and they shut down the production after 15,000 vehicles were produced. Number nine. The 2005 Dodge Ram Daytona is a limited edition that comes with a Hemi-powered engine. This is instantly recognizable by its massive 11-inch rear spoiler that added more downforce on the rear wheels, giving it more traction and a race car style design. The truck also came with complimentary flat black graphics on the bedsides, a hood scoop, a body colored grill, and stock tail lamp guards. Number eight. The Jeep Forward Control is a truck that is named due to its layout. This came with many options for the truck bed, including flatbeds, fire truck, dump truck, and tow trucks. The mostly cab over design or forward control design was marketed as a work vehicle for corporations, municipal, and military uses. A while back, we made a custom Jeep vehicle video that covered how awesome and versatile Jeeps really can be. However, you probably didn't see this one on that list. Honestly, we probably should have added it because there are some pretty unusual customs and conversions out there. Number seven. The next truck on our list is this Dodge Swepside that was manufactured in the late 1950s. A D100 series half-ton truck famous for its flashy tail fins and hooded headlights was made in the style of its sister Dodge Wagon also from the late 50s. This limited production vehicle was hand-built from a production pickup. This came with a V8 engine with a four-barrel carburetor and a three-on-the-tree transmission. Number six. Some may say this isn't a truck, but more of a car. We say anything with a truck bed is essentially a pickup truck if you look close enough and there is a truck bed on the back of this vehicle. The Baja was sold from 2003 to 2006 with an original manufacturer's suggested retail price of $23,000 to $28,000, which we might add was all during the same time the Subaru Outback was selling for the same price. Strangely enough, the Baja 
is still holding quite the value, some as high as 11,000 plus. What do you guys think? Would you classify this as a pickup or a car? Let us know in the comments below. Number five. This next truck comes from the German automaker Vidal and Sohn. They were primarily known for producing military vehicles during the 1930s through the 40s, so it would only make sense that they made a style of pickup for secure cargo and travel. The Tempo Matador was produced for a short period from 1949 through 1951 and was designed around the well-tested 25 horsepower Volkswagen engine. Number four. The first generation Honda Ridgeline was never a huge success, although it did offer customers a lot of potential. The Ridgeline is somewhat unique in the truck world, offering half-ton capabilities in a more compact package. Better suited for the casual truck user than those needing a heavy-duty platform, it is typically referred to as a sport utility truck, or SUT for short, but it's still compared to pickups instead of other SUTs. Honda, listening to their critics and fans, would eventually release a second generation, revisualized version, which is still in production today. Number three. Chevy made this cab over engine vehicle with only a cab and frame to allow the owner to add an aftermarket bed to suit their needs. This truck from the AK series was sold as a light duty truck and was produced starting in 1941. These trucks can be found for sale online with different truck beds and engine sizes. This is the 1941 model that was used in the movie Jeepers Creepers, which has a custom design box built onto the frame behind the cab. Number two. Still having a small following of diehard VW fans, the Volkswagen Rabbit pickup with its 60 horsepower didn't last as long as their coupe variant. The newly introduced Rabbit, also known as the Golf elsewhere, was a favorite buy at the time. With an emerging market in the U.S., Volkswagen knew American buyers were into trucks. Because of this, Volkswagen gave the nod to build the pickup variant of the Rabbit, which was known to the rest of the world as the Caddy. The 2012 Wildfire WF650T, an unusual-looking three-wheeled fuel-efficient truck, Registered as a motorcycle with the Department of Transportation while powered by a 650cc water-cooled four-stroke twin engine, this vehicle would get you places. Manufacturer Sandy claimed fuel efficiency of 60 miles per gallon was achievable. However, some dealers have stated that realistically, 40 to 60 miles per gallon was more accurate. The three-wheeled wildfire is technically licensed as a motorcycle, which made it exempt from many safety regulations, such as airbags, and side impact beams. Believe it or not, the Wildfire is one foot longer than a smart car, but weighs a thousand pounds less. Hey guys, this is Cassie. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell us in the comments below what you found to be the most interesting and why. Also, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.